I'm gonna take a shot on this one. You're gonna say beer. I'm buying everybody around on this! Oh my god! The St. Louis Blues will hold on to Vladimir Tarasenko and trade him at the deadline. Mr. LaRocco. Um, you know, beer. Uh, this, is, this is another one. Um, you know, it might, it might take some time. Um, but you have a team in St. Louis who obviously would like to move him. You don't want distractions. Tarasenko wants to move. Um, they still have to sign Robert Thomas. Um, and I heard that they also have a deal to bring back Tyler Bozak, but they can't complete that yet either because of their cap space. So by moving Tarasenko sooner than later, they could take care of the rest of their housekeeping. Um, so yeah, in a perfect world, I think they want to do it before the season starts. I'm just not sure if they're going to finally just face it that they're not going to get full value for or full value for him. And they might decide to hold on to him, but, um, it could pay off because if they hold on to him and he, you know, proves to be healthy and he puts up Tarasenko type numbers before his injuries, um, you might get the return that, uh, you might get the return that you, you know, that you would have been able to get from the beginning from him. So. Uh, interesting to see how St. Louis is going to play this. Um, they might just wipe their hands clean and just be done with it, start fresh, or they might just say, screw it, we're going to wait. But um, it's lies somewhere in the middle there. So not doing shot, not doing round, beer. Phil? I'm going to say round. Okay. And I'm, I'm going to say round because of the fact that I don't think that there's anything available right now that would really entice Doug Armstrong to move him. And Anthony, you posted it in the group chat before, and the names that you mentioned from the Islanders were just that it was just pathetic. I mean, if if the, if if that and there's no vitriol between Tarasenko and the Blues. He just wants to go, and, and you know what? That's fine. You know what? It, it, there, there's no sense of vitriol. There's no been no reported vitriol like there is with Eichel and the Sabers. And there's verbal barbs being thrown around, and it's being public, and it's and it's like, oh well, they screwed up my surgery, and the doctors don't know what the hell they're doing. It's, it's not Lindros, you know, twenty years ago as well. Also, so um, I, I, I think they're gonna hold on to him. They're gonna, you know, try to see what's going to happen with him, and he's going to try to bounce back and, and show that he could at least stay healthy. Because, and he may not be able to put up the numbers he was putting up pre-all of this, but if he can put up respectable numbers and stay healthy, someone's going to look at him at the deadline, and he, they're going to give St. Louis more than much more, I should say, than what's being supposedly offered now. So I, I, I don't... I don't think unless he says I'm not playing for you, trade me, then I I don't see any way where they they don't do this because the returns simply just aren't good enough right now. And Doug Armstrong's already told us this by saying we're pretty much going to keep on to him previously. So until something drastic changes, I'm I'm buying around here. Uh, I'm actually going to go to beer because I could see him starting the season in St. Louis, but I could see it more of like a the Taylor Hall trade that I believe happened in November maybe early December, and uh, they're going to want to get, get rid of him quickly. I don't think they're going to wait till the deadline. So that qualifies still that he's going to play games for St. Louis, but I don't think it's going to be um, what we think is going to be and how long he's going to be there. Speaking of unsigned players, Elias Pettersson will be unsigned when camps open, and I... I'm like Mr. Round. Jeez, you want to be <laughs> with me at the bar tonight. Goodbye and everybody again. Because there is no shot he is going one L by the way one L one L one L and Elias son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, as I fix that, uh, Anthony, go. Oh, is our Phil? Go ahead. I haven't gone back. I'm going to say beer because I'm not really sure on this. To be honest with you, I, I just they have to do something with him. And the cap situation, just looking at their cap, and I, I just want to pull it up so I, I have the the number in front of me. But they have 
10 million in cap space. Just on, uh, just under 11, let's just say. It's 10.664 technically. But they have to sign him. They have to sign Quinn Hughes. Um, Michael Furland is on long term. So uh, I, I guess that there's not really... I don't know. It's, it, it, cap friendly says projected LTIR used zero. So I'm, I'm not sure if that number factors into it yet. But if that number factors in, then, I mean, it, it helps them a little bit. But there's not a lot of space here. And you would imagine that both of these players go well over that if 10 million, even 13 would be something where you're saying to yourself, considering what Kel McCarr just got, uh, I mean, I have to say Quinn Hughes has got to get something close to that, right? And then Elias Pedersen, I would say you're at least looking at eight million for him. So, where is this cap space? Who's being moved? Who takes someone like Tyler Myers? Because Tyler Myers would be the guy that I'd be looking at moving and say, "Hey, you know what? You're a good player, but you're you're definitely not worth that." And you you just you just got Connor Garland, then Oliver Ekman Larson. You're not moving them. Uh, I, uh, they just signed Travis Hamnick again. So Tyler Myers is really the one guy that you got to look at and say to yourself, hey, you know what? He's got to be the target. So I I really wonder who takes him. Could that be where the Islanders swoop in? Not at six million. I mean, they 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 would have to. They'd have to retain some salary. Um. So what are you going? What do you what are you doing? I'm 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 just I'm saying beer. I think he said beer before. I think that's what I had on there. I'm I'm gonna go. I'm going to go round. Um, you know, it seems like every year there's a you know, high profile RFA that misses some time. Um, you know, last year Barzell signed three days, three days into camp or so. Um, you know, Mitch Marner did it a couple of years ago. Obviously, Nylander missed games in the regular season. Uh, I think, you know, this is a guy that, you know, wants, wants to be paid handsomely. Um, Vancouver can't right now. Like John said, they're in a tough spot with, you know, not a really an easy spot with who they can move out to, to make the room to sign both Hughes and Pedersen to market value deals. Um, so I think this one's going to stretch out a little bit longer. I mean, ultimately it's going to get done. I don't think he'll miss any games, uh, but I could definitely see him not being there on the first day of camp. So uh, like I said previously around here. All right. And one more guys. Uh, this one I threw in there. Detroit's Jeff Blaschel. Uh, wow. Did I m- mispronounce that one? Uh, well, Detroit no, National is in a put up or shut up season. And you know, I'll start it again. Yeah, I got to buy. Holy sh- wow, I am buying a lot today. But I mean, they want to see progress. I know they're rebuilding. Uh, I think, I think if they're, I think it's basically this season and then they're going to want to start competing next year. That's what I think. And uh, Iserman's. Got a lot of those contracts, like the Nick Letty contract, which goes this year, and uh, there's another contract that he that he put on the books. But it's just like uh, Mark Stahl, I believe, comes off the books this year as well, right? Yeah, I think it's yeah. yeah. Year. Okay, so yeah, they're gonna want to start competing soon. That's what he's building towards. Um, Anthony, sorry, Mark, I got a shot here. Um, it's okay. The Red Wings don't have. Um, don't have any high expectations this year. I mean, it's not like they, I mean, they still have a lot of holes. Yeah, yeah, and Nick Letty, you know, he'll up on defense. But um, after Letty, it's really the Kaiser, Phil Peronic. I mean, you don't really, Morris Sider is going to be a kid if he makes a team. So um, they're not going to, you know, it's not like they're going to expect him to go out and be Mikhail McCarr right away. He's not that type of guy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they, forward wise, um, still, a, you know, underwhelming group. Yeah, you have, you know, Larkin and, you have Tyler Bertuzzi, uh, Rana looked good for them after they acquired him. Um, but Suter. again, they're not. Yeah, they signed Pia Suter, but they're not a they're not a deep team at forward. Um, I still expect them to be a towards the bottom of the standings. Yeah, they're they're better in goal. There's no question there, and Adelkovic is going to help them in goal. Um, but Blashill, it's not like Blashill has all these tools that Eiserman gave him this year, and that you know now it's his turn to make something out of it. I think still. They're still in the early stages here, so I don't think there's any pressure on him. Um, so, yeah, like I said, I'm going to stick with Shot. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm going with Shot as well because this, this this roster, like Anthony said, just 
he isn't good enough to compete. It's really not. I mean, even if you want to account for Philip Zadina taking a big step this year, um, I mean, Robbie Fabry was a guy that nobody's mentioned so far, 25 years old, and he's really started to found himself or find himself in Detroit after kind of having a rough start to his career in St. Louis. Um, you know, P.S. Suter's a nice signing. It, it, it's, it's not enough. Um, the And not only that, but also – the, the roster is constructed is just not great overall. Four of their top six defenders are UFAs after this year, which is insane to think about. Um, uh, you know, Mort Sider could make possibly an impact with the team this year, depending on what they want to do with him or if they want to just make him wait another year and have him develop. I don't know how much more left he can really prove in the SHL. I mean, does he play in Grand Rapids this year? And, and adjust to North America, I mean, that might help them. They have a ton of cap space as it is, but they're going to have even more cap space next offseason. I mean, we could talk about the stability that they've had in coaching over the last 30 years because they've but, but had – But that's the issue, though. I, I mean, do you – I don't know how you could put Blash Hill in that type of situation and put him on a hot seat when he really doesn't have anything to work with. I'm not saying that – I'm. He, I'm just saying there needs to be progress. That's what there, I, I I think if you would have worded it that way, then yes. And put up or shut up implies that he's going to lose his job if they don't make the playoffs or come close to it. And I, I just don't think that's the case. I really don't. So don't shot here. All and, right. Well, uh, I mean, here here's one thing. To, to kind of be fair and play devil's advocate, if I don't see progress from somebody like Philip Zadina, or some of the other younger guys, or maybe Philip Ronick takes a step back, yeah. something like that, then maybe they might look at Jeff Blashell and say next season would be a season where you could possibly see him on the hot seat. All right. Uh, I was just trying to fix a problem that I had uh, on Twitter, but I'll get that in a minute. AZ, again, just message me again, so that way that'll be on there. That's all things Ranger. Which uh, actually, I forgot to even put up all of our uh, brand new graphics. But unfortunately, they're always going to be hidden when the when the other thing is on there. Oh, yeah, would love it if I would love it if we can ever get that on there. But uh, don't worry, they're in the edited videos anyway. All right, yeah. so everybody, what do you think? Uh, are Arpa sheets going to be the wave of the future, or they're going to go the way of the dodo? Uh, the New York Rangers. Uh, what was my Ranger one? It was uh, Sean Couturier's deal will make Mika Zibanejad a little bit cheaper. Uh, Thomas Hurdle, a better option for the Rangers. Ilya Sorokin, ready to take the rounds. The Reigns for the Islanders. All those rounds I was giving up. Put it all down in the comments below, guys. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Mm, your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.